Hi, everyone. Thank you uh, for attending my talk. So I'm going to present my work, Swift, which is an adaptive video streaming system using layered neural codecs. This work is in collaboration with my colleagues, Kumara, Samir, Aruna, and Dimitri from Stony Brook University. Before going into the details, let me give you a little outline of what I'm going to talk today, OK? So I'll spend a little bit of time on background and motivation behind our work, demonstrating some of the fundamental problems and challenges of today's video streaming systems. And then I'll introduce our system, Swift, which is based on layered neural video coding, which has three main components, an encoder, a decoder, and a streaming protocol. And then I'll uh, conclude my talk by showing some of the performance benefits of Swift by comparing with exist some of the existing works in this area. Okay. So uh, let's start by looking at some of the problems that video streaming is facing today. Okay. Particularly in the networking community, we have uh, two major problems for video streaming. One is the limited throughput. The second one is uh, the variability or the fluctuations in the throughput. As you can see, a, a, an example trace here. On the y-axis, we have throughput. On the x-axis, time scale in seconds. So there is a quite a bit of variance that you can see here. So to deal with this, traditionally, people use this solution called adaptive streaming, adaptive video streaming, where you have a video server that encodes a video into multiple renditions of different qualities that requires different levels of throughput. On the client side, you have some sort of uh, uh, adaptive bitrate algorithms that estimates this throughput and streams a suitable quality, a suitable video bitrate based on the net its estimated network capacity. But the problem with this is that it is extremely difficult to predict the network throughput, estimate the network throughput, and you often see some delay in reacting to the network. And you end up having a stall or a poor, quality, poor video quality. So this video bitrate selection has been a fundamental problem in video streaming and has been studied for over a decade almost. So there is a lot of prior work. So what I will do next is I'll walk you through some of the limitations of these prior work and then introduce our system, OK? So here is, the, here is an example network throughput trace. On the y-axis, we have throughput or bitrate. Bitrate is a proxy for the video quality, you can uh, uh, imagine. So this uh, dark line uh, shows the throughput. So we have on the uh, x-axis time scale. So until 100, 100 second, we have around 200, 2 Mbps. And then it increases to 20 Mbps after and then stays there. Let's see some of the algorithms, how they perform on this network throughput trace. Okay? So we have BOLA, uh, which is a buffer-based algorithm that estimates this network throughput. That takes almost 75 seconds to achieve the highest quality under this network throughput when the uh, network throughput increases from 2 Mbps to 20 Mbps. Um, the reason behind this uh, delay is that it buffers, it prefetches the low quality chunks because it experienced the low, 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 um, low throughput for a while. And even after it uh, uh, detects the network throughput increase, it makes a conservative estimate not, uh, and not bring the high quality chunks to avoid uh, any incorrect estimates in network throughput um, and uh, put, uh, avoiding potential stall. So there is a long delay. There are other uh, types of algorithms called BOLA FS. One example is BOLA FS, which does fast switching. For example, we have a little bit faster, like 25 seconds reaction time here. What it does is, as soon as it detects the network throughput increase, it re-downloads a higher quality version of the segments that are video chunks that are already downloaded, and then discards the low quality chunks. But the problem with this approach is that there is a bandwidth waste because they are not being displayed. The, the low quality chunks are not being displayed and discarded. So in the literature or in the industry, most of the industry solutions fall in these two categories. Either they are bandwidth efficient and have slow reaction, or they have fast reaction, but they are bandwidth inefficient. So in this work, we want to bridge the gap between the two. So we look at an alternative technique called layer, layered video streaming, which is very well suited for this kind of scenarios. What it does is it uses a concept of compression technique called layered coding. Um, so the way it encodes the video is into, it, into layers. For example, here is the base layer that encodes the video into a certain quality with, let's say, a certain bitrate that gives, let's say, 
certain resolution. You encode the next layer such that when you combine these two layers, you get better quality or a better resolution. Similarly, you can encode more and more layers, and you can combine more and more layers to get better and better, quality, better and better quality. The advantage with this approach is that as the network conditions change, you can play with these layers. You can incrementally download these layers and combine them to get better quality. This is unlike the current practice of compression, where you encode this video into uh, multiple uh, independent versions where you cannot combine them together. So this is a very well-suited approach for these uh, networking conditions. So, but the problem with this, uh, this layered streaming is that uh, there are two problems. One is compression overhead and the coding latency. For example, here this plot shows that uh, it requires 2.5x more bits to achieve the same quality compared to non-layered coding, the current practice of coding. And it also uh, has the latency problem, which is a function of the layers. So it increases, the latency increases proportionately as we increase the number of layers. So because of these problems, uh, most of the industry solutions do not adopt this uh, concept of layered streaming, even though it is very well suited for uh, streaming videos over the internet. So we look at the problem, we look at this problem, um, and take a clean slate learning driven approach in this work using neural codecs. So the basic idea behind neural codecs is that one, example, one basic idea is to use autoencoder-based neural network that takes an input image or video and then downgrades into a low resolution image called a bottleneck layer or a code we're calling. And then there is a decoder component that reconstructs the original version uh, from that code, from that compact code. So there are two key design decisions behind this work, behind choosing this uh, learning-based compression. One is the traditional compression algorithms are becoming, you know, they're, they're witnessing a saturation point um, while hitting the complexity wall in terms of power consumption and the latencies. The other reason is that neural codecs are becoming mainstream, they're becoming more and more popular, and they're also achieving uh, on par performance with the, the traditional compression techniques. So we introduced Swift based on these design principles, which has three main components. One is encoder that prepares these layered compression codes. Um, and we also have a decoder and then the, the streaming protocol. So let's see first how we prepare these layered codes. So we leverage the concept of these uh, residual codes that are very popular in, this, in the computer vision community. The way we do that is we take the, the learning, uh, the autoencoder from the, uh, the computer vision community. You know, we have these neural codecs. We take this generic encoder and encodes an image into a base layer. We get a code C0 and then decodes it into the, the original image. The way that we encode the next layer is that we take that reconstructed image and then subtract it from the original image, you get a residual code. And you take that residual, uh, you get a residual and you encode that residual into next layer code. And when you combine that residual with the previous layer, after decoding, you get better quality because the residual is what adding the last information. And you can prepare layered codes similarly with more and more iterations. It turns out this is, this is actually the most efficient way to compress uh, because it is giving the last information when you uh, put them together. So you can use those codes as uh, the layered codes to transmit over the internet. Okay. Next, we introduce a, a neural decoder for the layered streaming. Uh, the reason why we introduce another decoder is that here, here, here also we have a decoder. But the problem with the decoder is that it iteratively decodes the codes, so which has the latency problem, right? So we, to address that latency challenge, we introduce a separate decoder for the client side, which is called a single shot decoder that takes a combination or a subset of these codes and fuses them together, fuses them together or merges them together and decode all of them in one go. So it is in single, single, single iteration. So the net result is that uh, because the codes are decoded in one go, uh, the latency is now independent of these layers. So as you can see, the traditional uh, layered compression has this uh, proportionate increase in latency uh, compared to Swift's latency, Swift, uh, Swift's layer decoding. Another challenge we uh, face is that because these uh, neural codecs run in software on GPUs or like uh, accelerators, they also face content with other, contention with other applications. So we have to make sure that it is achieving this real-time playback, uh, real-time decoding for the real-time play playback. 
to do that, we introduce multiple exits in this decoder to achieve different levels of quality that requires different levels of comput compute capacity. So you can, uh, uh, you can have a low quality uh, decoding if you have less compute capacity. So you can adjust the decoder. We can scale the decoders. So with this uh, decoder, we have this um, trade-off between the compute capacity and the network capacity based on the number of layers that you download and the exit depth that you use based on the compute capacity, you achieve a certain um, video quality. Next, so now that we have the compression technique, we introduce our uh, streaming protocol. So the key difference between the layered video streaming and the current practice of video streaming is that uh, we have now an opportunity to upgrade the video quality by going back if, uh, if the network throughput increases, right? So we have to make that decision. So that's the key question, key question to answer here, right? Um, our objective is to maximize the quality of experience, which uh, in general people use uh, a function of average quality and styles and smoothness. We use similar function for this. So uh, the ABR protocol, which is a streaming protocol, takes some of these network statistics and the client side statistics um, and answers the question to enhance the video quality or do a fresh download. And once it chooses this, this segment index to enhance, uh, to enhance our fresh download, it also asks the question how many layers to fetch. Okay? So the colored text is what we introduce in Swift. The other uh, network history buffer occupancy and download qualities have been used in the past work. So that's the key difference from the past streaming algorithms. So putting everything together in Swift, we have on the server side, we have layered codes as opposed to the independent renditions of the video qualities. And on the client side, we have um, the neural decoder, neural, neural layer decoder, um, and we have the downloaded buffer that uh, the ABR algorithm schedules the downloaded video chunks to the scalable decoder to achieve different, uh, different qualities based on the compute capacity by taking different statistics from the computer and the network, network side. So we compare uh, Swift with a bunch of baselines, uh, including compression and streaming algorithms. Um, on the compression side, we have traditionally uh, used H.264 algorithm, which is majority of the current streaming algorithms, uh, streaming solutions used. The SHVC is the, uh, a form of layered coding that is built on top of H.264. For streaming side, we use uh, four baselines. One is BOLA, which is the buffer-based algorithm. BOLA FS, which does fast switching by discarding chunks. And we also use PENSI, which is a state-of-the-art learning-based uh, adaptation technique. We also use GRAD, that uses le learning-based adaptation technique, but uses the SHVC, which is a form of layered coding. So these are the baselines. And we evaluate SWIFT uh, with uh, diverse metrics. Our overall goal is to improve the QoE, so we uh, go with QoE first and then uh, break it down into qualities, uh, styles, and temporal smoothness, et cetera. We also uh, report bandwidth utilization and how fast Swift reacts compared to the other, uh, other existing methods um, and some of the compression-related performance metrics. Okay. I'm not going to go over all of these metrics. I'll show uh, some key results, um, and the comprehensive results can be found in the paper. So this, uh, this plot that I showed earlier, um, on the y-axis we have this throughput or the bit rate. On the x-axis we have time scale. So as you can see here, Swift reacts faster than uh, all of the other alternatives. And hence the name, by the way, it reacts faster. That's why it's Swift. Um, so uh, an important thing to note here is that it not only reacts faster than the other algorithms, it also has a better bandwidth utilization because uh, the algorithms like BOLA FS and, and GRAD, they're close to SWIFT, but they have a lot of compression overhead because BOLA FS, first of all, it discards the video chunks, and GRAD, it has a traditional layered compression technique which has a lot of compression overhead. So the advantage with SWIFT is that it reacts fast while saving the bandwidth, okay? So because of this uh, um, fast reaction, Swift achieves a QoE by, uh, Swift improves QoE by 45% compared to the next best alternative. And it also has the bandwidth uh, savings of up to 18%. So to conclude, we have demonstrated that uh, layered coding provides a very fine-grained rate adaptation 
for variable networking conditions to stream videos under ne variable networking conditions. But uh, traditionally, it is very difficult to devise an algorithm to achieve that concept. And uh, neural video codecs are becoming more and more uh, popular. They're becoming mainstream. And we have shown a way to realize this concept of layered coding using neural video, neural video codecs. Um, we presented, overall, we presented Swift, that is an adaptive video streaming system using layered neural codecs that has uh, three different components, an encoder and a decoder, and a streaming protocol. With that, I'd like to um, uh, thank everyone and take any questions from the audience.